Hello, my name is Hannah and I'm going to talk to you today about our chromosomes kit as well as our two karyotypes kits. Together these three kits form a really solid foundation for investigating and studying Mendelian genetics. With the chromosomes kit, you can use it to discuss mitosis and particularly meiosis as the snap together pieces are perfect for demonstrating crossing over. Then with our karyotypes kit and our aneuploidy expansion to it, we have the option to discuss the genetic variation between related individuals. You can do so through looking at random assortment and independent segregation of chromosomes. And then you can even get into some of the mistakes that happen during meiosis that result in aneuploidy birth defects. So let's talk a little bit about how you assemble the chromosomes kit. Simply de-support your models. Now the only ones that have support are the ones here that form the centromere. And you simply take pliers and you break the support off the bottom of it. You want to make sure you get this very clean so that you don't unintentionally snap one of the pieces when you're combining the ball joints. Then for the socket part of the ball joint, you need to make sure you remove the support from the bottom, the center, and these two little ones along the sides. Once you've done that for all of your colors, you're ready to go. Then you get to start building your own chromosomes. We include four chromosomes in each kit. Two larger ones that include optional genes and two smaller ones. And from each, it represents one from the mother and one from the father. We use G simply to represent any generic gene allele. Now, if you want to add genes representation to the smaller chromosome sets or add in different letters, you can also do so simply using tape. Slide it onto the piece you would like to add the letter to. Then take a permanent marker and add the letter of your choice to it. When assembling your chromosome, start with the two centromere pieces and connect that center ball joint. Then, using the ball joints, simply snap on the additional chromosome segment. Be sure to select either big G or little g according to the individual you would like to create. Then, simply take any of the unused segments with the extra G's and remove them, and then you have four chromosomes that are ready to go for a variety of mitosis and meiosis exercises. For instance, during Metaphase 1, you have the option of demonstrating for your students crossing over as one of the ways that genetic variance happens. So when they bring their chromosomes together, you can actually snap the pieces apart and trade them out. Once they've crossed over, you can move on to the following phases. So that's a basic overview of how the chromosome kit works. Because the chromosomes have these built-in genes right onto them, these are really good for integrating with statistics and expectations specifically regarding Punnett squares. We have a set of dice, our Punnett square dice kit, that is also designed to have big G and little g dice, so you can actually roll the dice to test the genetic outcome based on particular individuals. Or you can integrate with our genome generator dice to randomly generate Punnett squares. So this is a really good chance to integrate Punnett squares with genomes and with mitosis and meiosis, so they all go together and you get a chance to have a really interactive experience. The karyotypes kit is really useful for demonstrating the law of independent assortment. By allowing students to demonstrate and model the segregation of chromosomes that happens during meiosis 1. To do that, simply let the students select or randomly generate using say a coin flip, which chromosomes are selected to be part of the creation of an eventual sex cell. Once they do this for chromosomes 1 through 23, the students can then trace the maternal and paternal genes that were passed along by simply flipping the chromosomes over to reveal either mom or dad engraved on the reverse side. If you have your entire class go through and do this, you can then integrate math by talking about combinations and the incredible unlikelihood it would be of having two identical individuals. If you want to go even further than that, you can get back into using the chromosomes kit to discuss the increased genetic variance that happens during crossing over. More than that, the chromosomes kit has also been designed to actually replicate the general shape of each of the chromosomes. So you notice, for instance, that the chromosomes that are smaller numbers, one, two, three, are larger than the chromosomes in the 20s. This allows students to then classify them the way scientists would. Or you can dive really deep into genetics using our aneuploidy expansion. 
This is a chance with these eight additional aneuploidy chromosomes that are not labeled with either a mom or a dad on the reverse side for the students to see some of the impact that the genetic has on a person's life. And so, for instance, if an individual were to have a third or a trisomy of the 18th chromosome, they would have Edwards syndrome. Or if it was the 21st, it would be an individual with Down syndrome. So this is a really good chance to talk about specific genetic defects and the impact they have on the individuals. So whether you are going through mitosis and meiosis, you're doing crossing over, you're going through all of the stages there with the chromosomes kit, you're integrating it with Punnett squares, with genetics, or you're going deep into karyotyping and understanding genetic variation between related individuals, we really hope you enjoy using these three kits in your classroom. Thanks for listening and have a great day.